Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the AQA required practical for biology on microbiology. And what we're going to be looking at in particular is how different kinds of disinfectants affect the growth of E. coli. I have already wiped down my desk and my hand, hands sorry, using my disinfectant. It's very, very important in this practical that we avoid contamination. We don't want any bacteria from our hands, from our cells, from the desks getting into our experiment. And at the same time, we do not want to spread around any of the E. coli we're using into the environment because it could make people very ill. So what you will need before you start this practical is a uh, pour dish, petri dish, using agar jelly. You will need a preparation of the bacterium. I'm using E. coli today. You will need four disinfectants, sorry, three disinfectants and one um, distilled water to use as control. You will need some small paper discs, usually cut out of filter paper does pretty well. You will need some sterile pipettes and you will need a spreader, I'm using a plastic spreader. You can also grab yourself a pair of tweezers, you will need some sellotape and you will need a sharpie. The very first thing to do when we get our equipment is to label everything up. I'll show you the petri dish that I've already labelled. Here it is. So I have written all of these bits of information on the bottom of the plate where the agar jelly is. If I wrote it on the top, it could rotate around and then the places that I have said something is, is no longer where it is. So we write it on the bottom instead. Divide your plate into four pieces and Write your initials, write the date, and write the type of bacteria that you're using. And you also want to, in each of your four zones, write the three different kinds of disinfectant you're using. So I'm using Clearasil, Dettol, and Listerine. Once you have labelled up your plate, it's time to spread your bacteria. The bacteria that you've got will come usually in a sealed container and it's important that we do this quickly so that we don't contaminate the air around us. So, glass spreader or plastic spreader in my case, decontaminate by passing through the flame. You will want to lift up your E. coli lid. Oh, it smells terrible and lift up the lid of your petri dish. The petri dish lid is going towards the flame so the bacteria can't get in. And just pour a little bit on the surface. There we go. Flame to the top, put the lid down, and close. So I'm just going to de disinfect um, my spreader in there. And now you draw your spreader around the plate. All of that lovely E. coli. It needs to cover the agar jelly entirely. Pop it back on, disinfect the spreader and I can now throw this off. In here I've got a disposal jar. Anything you're done with just put it in a big beaker like that and then I know that later that's just a throwaway. So I've got my E. coli on there. The next step is to put my little paper discs in the correct place. I've already placed my four types of antiseptic, sorry, three types of antiseptic and one control in the little beakers which I've labelled up. I've got Clearasil, Dettol and Listerine and my distilled water. Now I'm using metal forceps. I'm of course going to sterilise these by passing through the drain. Take one of the paper discs and put it in your distilled water. You just need to pick up a little bit of the water, it doesn't have to be soaking for too long. Place it in the correct area of your disc, lay it back on. Flame again. Second disc. Into the antiseptic. I'm matching up my antiseptic that I've written with the correct area. I'm flaming between every one because of course my T 
tweezers or forceps are going onto the E. coli slightly and I do not want to transfer across any of my E. coli. My paper discs I'm putting roughly in the middle of each quadrant. Eventually I'm going to see bacteria growing around there. So if I put them in the middle, the spread won't be in the quadrants. Plain to finish, that's in my disposal bar. Now what I have is my four discs on my E. coli. You can see my E. coli is starting to drip there slightly. Now I need to tape it up. So I've got some sellotape here. Very, very simple taping it up. You do not want to tape all the way around the edge. You only want to tape. Oh, I'm just grabbing scissors. You only want the tape to go in four sections, kind of like a cross over the top. If you tape all the way around the edge, you won't leave any holes. You won't leave any air to circulate. That can cause the growth of anaerobic bacteria, which can be dangerous, which obviously we don't want. So we just tape it across, around at the sides. And then when I go to pick it up, I know that it's sterile, I know that I have a lot of bacteria that could be leaking out. I know that nothing harmful is going to grow in there. Hopefully I've managed to do this so that I only grow my E. coli. I do not want contamination. I'm saying the word contamination a lot because that is a key word to use in AQA biology. Contamination means when we have a foreign bacteria or um, other pathogen getting in that we don't want. Once I've taped it up, you leave it upside down. The bacteria are going to respire, they're going to produce water. We do not want that water to drip onto the agar. So if it's upside down, the water will drip onto the lid and you won't have any problems. When you leave that for a couple of days, not too long, um, you will find that you have what we call zones of clearance or inhibition around your paper discs. So you can see I've ignored my control there. Usually on the control you don't have any zone of clearance. So for these three you can see the circle is slightly um, larger on this one, middle, smallest. We need to calculate the zone of inhibition or clearance and that will tell us which um, antiseptic was the best. You take two measurements, one across one up and down, and then you can use your normal area of a circle um, calculation to work out how big it is. Zone of inhibition or clearance means the zone where the bacteria have not grown, not the zone where bacteria have necessarily been destroyed. If you just say zone of clearance or inhibition, that's good. So I can see on this one, this is my biggest zone of clearance, therefore that is the antiseptic that worked the best. Now that I'm done with my experiment, I'm going to put this in an incubator and I'm also going to be clearing my work surface. I will wash my hands thoroughly. I will also wash everything else that I have used with my disinfectant. Thank you very much for watching.